This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo Think Book, not Think Pad. 16p Gen 2. So I bought this most improved laptop line. So we reviewed the Lenovo ThinkBook 15p and it was okay and it didn't set the world on fire. So Lenovo went from a kind of pedestrian, more affordable, creative sort of like laptop and did everything that people like these days. So there's AMD Ryzen inside, an NVIDIA RTX 3060, a nice aluminum chassis and also an upgraded display. 16 inch now, QHD plus resolution, matte bright, a little over 400 nits. So that's all sounding pretty good. And the price tag starts around 1385, also pretty good for what you get here. We're going to look at it now. So the Lenovo ThinkBook line, for those of you who don't know, is geared towards sort of prosumers, I guess you would say. Those folks who are looking to do creative work, they want some of that ThinkPad DNA inside, but maybe not the price tag, maybe a little bit jazzy colors and stuff like that. So that's actually what you're getting here. But now with, again, the things that people want, like Ryzen and QHD plus 2560 by 1600 IPS displays and good graphics inside. And it's not too heavy of a carry either. 4.4 pounds, which is two kilograms, not too terribly th thick. And the thickest point is like 19.9 millimeters. And given the power inside, which, you know, let's face it, the horsepower in here in terms of the processor and the GPU is not so different from the lower end Lenovo Legion gaming laptops. Well, you have a good recipe here for those who review who are wanting to do video editing, who are Photoshop jockeys, uh, that sort of thing. So, in terms of connectivity, it's okay. It's not amazing here. This is not a gaming laptop with more ports than you can possibly imagine, but we do have two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, so we've got some legacy connections there, and those are out the back, as is the rectangular power connector. And on the side, you have two USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 as well ports. So this is Ryzen, so it's USB-C, but not Thunderbolt 3 or 4. And on the other side, a full-size SD card slot. Again, a nod towards content creators, those folks who are using cameras and stuff. And you, well, you get the idea. And even though we're talking a lot about creators and video and Photoshop, obviously, for those of you who are doing in low to intermediate level blender work, you've also got the horsepower here for sure, you know, maybe even a little bit more than intermediate level work. And another little creature comfort that I like, and this is something that we saw in the Legion, for the ports that are out facing back, up top, the little icons are actually LED lit in white, so it makes them a little bit easier to find in the dark. So for those of you who grumble about ports in the back, at least there's that concession. I like it. For biometrics, the ThinkBook has both a fingerprint scanner in the power button and a Windows Hello IR camera. And by the way, there's a webcam privacy shutter. It's a 720p webcam. It's okay. You know, the usual stuff. The display on this, again, QHD plus resolution, IPS matte non-touch. So that's 2560 by 1600 resolution or 2K resolution. So many ways to say the same thing here. And this is 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which again is very popular these days, especially for people who are doing work on the laptop and just not just consuming 16 by 9 aspect ratio videos on YouTube or Netflix or wherever you like to watch your videos. It's pretty bright too, especially for this price class, and certainly brighter than most gaming laptops typically are at 403 nits. The rest of the metrics are good. Of course, you have full sRGB coverage. The Adobe RGB coverage and the P3 aren't bad. This is not going to replace a Lenovo Think had workstation with a high-end display or an HP Dream Color, but it's pretty darn good and subjectively it looks really nice and for content consumption is delightful. And the calibration is pretty good too. So for those of you who don't own colorimeters, which are a hardware accessory device that we use to actually measure our displays, I, you really don't have to worry about it. It's calibrated well enough from the factory that you're good to go there. In terms of performance, what well, you got your choice of a Ryzen 5 5600H or what we have the Ryzen 7 5800H. And RAM is 16 gigs. So we're, we'll talk about the internals a little bit more in a bit so you can see what's going on in there. So again, with the RTX 3060, six gigabyte dedicated graphics with Radeon integrated graphics switchable to help you with battery life when you're just surfing the web or something like that. The RTX 3060 is 75 watt, which puts it in max Q territory, which for a non-gaming laptop of this thickness is fair enough. And you know, you can see right now here, it did just fine with Shadow of the Tomb Raider playing at native QHD plus resolution on high settings and direct X12. I mean, not bad, it's got game and it wasn't even that hot or that loud. So sure, yeah, if you purposely want gaming, get a gaming laptop. If you wanna do gaming on the side, 
totally, this is there for you. Speaking of that heat and noise, well, if Tomb Raider games aren't going to get it going, I don't know what will. Benchmarks, all the other things we did, it never gets howling loud. It doesn't ever get burning hot to the touch. This is a metal clad laptop, though, so you will feel a hot spot on the bottom if you're pushing it super duper hard. So, duh, like all powerful H class laptops, 45 watt, I, you know, don't put it on your lap when you're doing something really challenging if it gets too hot. Keyboard on this is not ThinkPad level. It's okay. It's fine. I don't hate it by any means. And believe me, there's some of Lenovo's more consumer-oriented laptops that are like idea pads that I haven't really liked the keyboard on. But this has some travel and some tactile feel. It's backlit in white. You do have the number pad on board for those of you who are, well, into the number pad thing. And the trackpad on this works perfectly well as well. I find it a little too fast out of the gate, but I mean, that's just a setting adjustment on it. It works nicely enough. So what about the internals? It seems like a fairly high performance laptop. Does it match what you would expect in terms of upgradability inside? First off, to take the bottom cover, it's really easy. Torx screws. You're going to need a guitar pick or something to pry it. It's on there pretty tight, but good ventilation here. And here's the underside. Notice these two here. These are thermal pads for, well, usually for SSDs. So that tells us, well, they might be planning on you having two of those. The first one indeed is right here under some copper tape. Boy, they are thermally being careful here, aren't they? So that's our boot SSD. And again, 512 gigabytes what we have. They have a one terabyte option. And well, there is a second M.2 slot right here, which corresponds to the other thermal pad stuck to the underside of cover. So there's that in case you want to expand your storage more. So that's looking pretty good, right? And we have two fans and a nice heat sink layout here, nice and beefy, covering a lot. So what about RAM? Hmm. Well, the good and the bad news is there is a RAM slot and we have an eight gig module here. Now we have a 16 gig laptop and dual channel RAM. So eight gigs is also soldered on board which is sort of like some Asus G series gaming laptops. So you don't go from 16 to 32 to 64, in other words, because eight is soldered on board. So it's eight plus whatever you add in for modules and the first 16 gigs will be in dual channel mode, the rest wouldn't. Anyway, for the price point and who they're going after, I think it's okay, but just so you're aware. And the Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6 card is socketed right here. So that's upgradable as well, though that's a fine card, but in case you want to go 6E in the future, and that also supports Bluetooth 5.2. Lastly, no surprise, the battery here, 71 watt hour, flanked by pretty large drivers, which is why this has some pretty good sound for a laptop in this price range, particularly, obviously it is geared towards multimedia and creator types because it's pretty loud and it has some fullness, some bass to it. So this is sounding pretty good as your all around kind of creator laptop that's not gonna break the back. You don't wanna spend $2,500 on a Dell XPS 15 and or, 16 inch MacBook Pro or something like that. How much battery life? Well, we have a 71 watt hour battery, which is not immense. It's decent. It's, they didn't, you know, skimp on it, but it's fine. And by the way, a 230 watt charger, which has the in, interesting industrial design that Lenovo is also used on laptops like the ThinkPad X1 Extreme. Uh, battery life is decent on this, certainly, if, with brightness set to 200 nits and doing a mix of productivity work, some web browsing, a little bit of video conferencing, about 25 minutes of that sort of thing. I was getting about mm, five and a half to six hours on the charge, which isn't that far off from Lenovo's claim of 6.9 hours, which isn't a very ambitious claim, is it? Now that is using mostly the Radeon integrated graphics, certainly not the NVIDIA GPU. So you're not gonna buy this as an ultrabook that can go for 10 hours or 15 hours at a run. Obviously it's much more powerful than that, but that's acceptable for the price and for the class of machine this is, that this is. So that's the Lenovo ThinkBook 16P Gen 2. Like I said, I voted most improved design here from the 16 by 10 aspect ratio QHD plus display to Ryzen inside to a pretty decent RTX 3060. It might be max Q level, but it's good enough to do some gaming on. Uh, they've done pretty well. Connectivity is not bad in terms of the ports. Not exactly amazing and class leading, but it's fine. Um, you know, and it's a consumer oriented laptop, so you're not going to get 4G or 5G LTE sort of thing going on here, but par for the course. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.